Welcome to worship this morning. It's an honor to bring the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. As we worship with Ashmore Uniting Church, may your hearts be strangely warmed by the very presence of the Lord Jesus himself. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. And they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Well, one of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, wasn't with the others when Jesus came. And they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand also into his side. Well, eight days later, the disciples were together again and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless anymore. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas explained. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Let me show you another picture. The Lord brought it to one of our congregation's memory this week as she was thinking about him. She was very young and this was a dust storm about to invade the town. Quite scary. But, and here's the thing, God was there. You might feel you're all alone right now, but you're not. Jesus is here with you. Look at this photo of a colouring in that was done by one of the congregation this week. It says it all. Where is God breaking into you and to your life today? And what are you going to do about it? Let's pray. Hallelujah. God, you're there at the edge of our awareness when we think we see you, in the still small voice, in the echoes of our hearing when we think we're listening to you, with us as Christ, present as Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise be to you. When you conquer our ego with your truth, hallelujah. When you humble us, bursting the bubble of our sense of goodness and self-righteousness by challenging our hypocrisy, hallelujah. When you lift us out of the mire of self-doubt and guilt with your grace and redemption, hallelujah. When life and its struggles leaves us with only faith and hope in you, hallelujah. When hope is faint or distant and your help a long time in coming, hallelujah. When you shatter the illusion of our belief and disbelief with your presence, hallelujah. When you shock us out of our comfort zones of religion with who and how you love, Hallelujah. When your call is undeniable, even though it leads us where we don't want to go. Hallelujah. When we struggle as your church to live well together, but find connection in you. Hallelujah. When discerning your will and call in the specifics of our circumstances and situations lead us into confused but hopeful prayer. 
Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture burst on my side Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, all is at rest I and my Savior and happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And now, in the quietness of this place, we bring before you our confession of sin. Hear our prayer. Most holy God, our ways are not like yours. Our thoughts are not as your thoughts, and our deeds so often do not reflect your deeds. We are in truth the low achievers who need uplifting, the timid who need encouraging, the clumsy who need correcting, the proud who need humbling, the rebellious who need recapturing, and the lost who need saving. May the risen Christ assert his presence in our midst, unhindered by the walls of this church or by the half-closed doors of our minds. May he assert his presence and reclaim us from everything that corrupts, degrades and alienates us from your joy and your salvation. This is our prayer, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear the good news. The scripture tells us that Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. By the grace of God, I declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Praying for the offering as part of Christian worship 
in the gifts of tithes and offerings to God. It's clearly not something we can do in the traditional way, but we ask that as you set apart what you would give, either by direct debit or by laying aside what you would normally do in Sunday worship, that you do so in this attitude of prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We thank you both for the work of this church and for its witness in the world. Bless the gifts we offer and each giver too. In Jesus' name, amen. Story time for the young and for the young at heart. Um, I've been thinking about this season of Easter and that continues, of course, this morning with more stories about discovery and transformation. Last week it was Mary that found herself unexpectedly in the presence of Jesus, right in that place that she would never have thought to see him. This week it'll be the fear-filled disciples. Well, I particularly love the story of Thomas, the one for whom the stories that others told were just not enough, and the grace that Jesus showed when he ministered to him. You know, it wasn't that Thomas didn't want to believe, but his faith, like that of each and every other of the disciples, his faith had taken a hit. Unless I see the scars where the nails pierced his flesh and put my finger into those scars, I will not believe. Well, this is what had me thinking of a family story. Over the last dozen years or so, our family has re-entered that era of band-aids, band-aids in a big way. We always had a box around the house when our four boys were growing up because band-aids were in a steady demand. Every hurt needed a kiss and a cuddle and a prayer and a band-aid, even the ones where only feelings were hurt. Now, it, it didn't really matter. There still needed to be a band-aid. And so for that reason, when the kids were little, I would ask the question, well, wh where do you want the band-aid put? Now, if there was flowing blood, that answer might be obvious but often that wasn't the case and even when it was there was usually a request for another band-aid to put, be put somewhere else and usually that was on the back of the hand or on a knee and the reason was so that they could show daddy or whoever else turned up the band-aid and tell the war story did you hurt your hand then no, I stubbed my toe and it really, really hurt and mummy gave me a band-aid. It makes perfect sense if you're three. Well, as I said, we have rejoined the ranks of the ready band-aid administrators with the arrival with, of our grandchildren and these days they even have fancy pictures on them. You know, the Band-Aid does more than keeping a sore from getting dirty. It actually marks the wound or, or the occasion if it's put somewhere obscure. A Band-Aid invites the real story. And when we see one, you know, we pay attention a little bit differently. Well, Jesus didn't have Band-Aids, but he had scars. And for Thomas and the others, the scar was the reminder. We saw him get hurt. And for those that didn't see, they at least had heard the stories of those who had been brave enough to be there at the point of the cross. Thomas needed to see the wound on Jesus' living body to work it through. Now, I told you that family story because the memory of it brought me to reflection. What is it that we see and experience that convinces us? Perhaps it's as simple as having a life partner or even a parent who never swayed from the faith, even right to the end. 
Or perhaps it is that we ourselves bear the scars of life experiences that serve, uh, serve to remind us not only of the pain, but also of times of extraordinary mercy. Maybe there was that time of divine peace in a context where, honestly, you would expect none. Or perhaps it is, like Thomas, that you're still looking, wanting to believe, understanding some of the value of faith that you see in other people's lives. Well, whatever it is that has drawn you to worship this morning, I trust in this story, in this time of prayer, in this setting of worship, that you find just that. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. And so the fear continues. I hope you've taken advantage of the Easter break to relax and re your skills of being safe and well. But I don't know if you've worked it out yet, but last weekend you reenacted the story of the first Easter. Remember the Bible reading at the beginning of our worship this morning? So much happens on the first day of the week. The empty tomb has its first missionary, Mary Magdalene. Easter has its first celebrant, John the Apostle. And the early church has its first worship service. Doesn't look like a worship service, does it? No building, no clergy, no music, no liturgy. But where it doesn't look at first glance like a church service, it is a church service because it's a gathering of the followers of Christ and Jesus appears in their midst. Granted, the followers of Christ are fear-filled followers of Christ. There's more anxiety than certainty. Still, Jesus shows up. Through the wall of their angst, Jesus appears. They lock the door to stay safe. But you know, no one is safe from the resurrected Lord. And he is the good shepherd. He's not about to lose any of his sheep. And so he shows up. Neither the walls of the room nor the fear of the followers can keep Christ away. He showed up then and he shows up still. So here's the thing. When we're afraid, he shows up. When we're hesitant to go out, he comes in. This week, as we huddle in our homes, let's not think that our Christ is less present today than he was then. He comes. In fact, don't you think it's interesting that he comes to them even though there's no record of them calling out for him? I know they must have been, but there's no record of it. And I think the idea is that he still shows up even when we're too afraid to cry out. He still shows up. Now, you'd rather go to church, of course. You'd rather be with your friends, of course. But you know, this year we have an even higher honour. We have the honour of receiving Christ in our lives right here, right where we are, right where you are. He shows up. And what he said then, he says still. He said, peace be with you. He said it three times. He shows up not with a tongue lashing, where were you? And he shows up and breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And that's for you too. Jesus sends your Holy Spirit to us this day. We can't get to his house, but that's okay. He's going to come to ours, and that's okay. But did you notice one of the 11 missed out? Thomas, for some reason, wasn't there, and he just couldn't seem to get his head around what they said happened. Jesus showed up? But that couldn't have happened. He's dead. Some of you saw him die. You don't just come back from that. Now, Thomas got a bad rap for all of that. But 
And here's the thing. How many times have we been told something incredible and gone away not believing? Hey, we do it all the time. It's not that we don't want to believe. It's just that, well, you know, it's just so hard to believe. You don't want to get your hopes up only to have them dashed because that's just so emotionally draining. I mean, the followers in that upper room didn't believe Mary when she told them that she'd seen Jesus. I can imagine, silly woman, off on another daydream. But, but, but Mary wasn't on any daydream nor were the followers in the upper room that night, nor was Clopas and his mate on the road to Emmaus. They all saw Jesus for real. But, but, but I didn't see him, Thomas said. And before I believe, I need to see. Now, the exciting thing is over in the Middle East, and I'm sure many other parts of the world, Jesus is still showing up, causing folks to follow him. This was not just a one-off Easter experience. This was an ongoing phenomenon. The Holy Spirit is leading people to Jesus, and God has myriads of ways of drawing them to himself. And you are included in that. Now, if you're already a follower of Jesus, then God will use you just like he did Mary and Peter and Thomas and Paul to lead others to him. And if you're not yet a believer in Jesus, then he will use others to woo you. And it's possible you'll even see him for yourself. But back to Thomas. Did you notice that when Jesus turned up the next Sunday night, or was it Monday night, Jesus was not angry with Thomas? You see, it's not wrong to doubt. You don't lose brownie points for doubting. It's a normal human reaction. It's like worrying. Jesus said, don't worry, but he doesn't castigate you for worrying. He just reminds you there's a better way. Trust me. Believe in me. Follow me. Jesus will meet you where you are to meet whatever need you have. If you're being distraught by all this isolation, Jesus will bring you peace. If you are about to ring a friend and offer them comfort, Jesus will fill you with whatever you need to minister life and hope to that friend. You can trust God. And just to solidify it all, on that first Easter night, Jesus prayed over them all, receive the Holy Spirit. Possibly this was John's way of saying what Luke says in Acts chapter 2. Were there two occasions when the Holy Spirit was poured out on people? Well, there's more than two recorded instances. There are stacks of them. And God is still pouring out his Holy Spirit on people everywhere. Is he in you? If you've invited Jesus into your life, then the Holy Spirit is right there with you. There's no doubt about that. But is he being useful in your life? I feel useful when I wash up after a meal. My wife is a great cook. And I feel I do my bit by washing up and keeping the kitchen clean. The Holy Spirit in you is not interested in just lounging about. He wants to be useful. He wants to make a difference in your life. He wants to bring blessing after blessing, not just to you, but to all you will intersect with. That means we will have to use him. We will have to talk with him. We will have to be led by him. And when we do, he fills us with the presence of God that revolutions our lives and the lives of those with whom we come in contact. Now, many of you have filled in the one-by-one one form that means you're praying for family, relations, friends, neighbours, that they will find God in their own lives. Did you know that when you follow God's instructions, you will lead many to him? The trick is, if there is a trick, and it's not really a trick, the thing you need to learn to recognise is God's voice when he talks with you. Samuel in the Old Testament needed to recognize God's voice when he spoke with him. So we too have to cultivate the art of recognizing God when he calls. We all have to start somewhere. 
Most of us look back on our lives and see where God has been, like in that poem of Footsteps in the Sand. Well, we now have to raise the bar a little and begin to talk with God and trust and assume that God will talk right back, just as if we're having a normal conversation. Well, it is a normal conversation. God does want to talk with you. The more you read your Bible, the better equipped you will be to hear God when he calls. And if you're not reading your Bible regularly, then use the discipleship notes that are sent out each Wednesday, either by email or mail, and start using them to recognize God's voice. God loves you. He'll go to bat for you anywhere, and he urges you to take him with you wherever you go. Listen for his still, small voice and follow him. You will not be disappointed. You'll be elated. You'll be overjoyed. And the result will be others too will open their hearts to Jesus because you led them to that point. Well, may God bless you as you seek to be a follower of God. And remember, you have to start somewhere. For Mary, it was Easter Day. For some of the disciples, it was Easter night. For Thomas, it was eight days later. For you? Let's pray. Lord God, what if? Risen Christ, what if the women only ran away? What if they told no one? What if Mary never recognized you? What if the disciple whom you loved didn't believe? What if Peter continued to deny his connection with you? What if Thomas and the others only continued to doubt? What if the men on the road to Emmaus didn't work it out that it was you? What if you didn't help them understand the events of Easter? What if Paul rejected your rebuke? What if he continued to persecute you? What if the disciples didn't receive your spirit? Risen Christ, we are inheritors of this story. We know that these ifs are not where it ends. We are the latest chapter. We are the ones in play. You are the one to guide us into the future. But what if we fail to follow? What if we allow ourselves to be waylaid or misdirected? Risen Christ, what if we run away from you and your truth? What if we fail to understand your meaning? What if we don't share your story? What if we share the wrong meaning? What if we fail to recognize you when you come to us? What if we don't heed your call? Risen Christ, open our faith within us. Raise us up with grace and love to go to others and tell them what we have seen and heard, to share the good news that you are God with us. Be disciples, Lord, and help others discover your way. So we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my soul this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. 
satisfied till every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory sin curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine the precious blood of Christ No guilt in life, no fear in death This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man. Never pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand Let us pray. Jesus, betrayed by one friend and deserted by eleven, we pray this morning for all people who are feeling rejected or abandoned. Let them know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. May they find a peace and a purpose that is granted in your steadfast love. Lord, we pray for those on our one-by-one one list. Draw them to you and give them the courage to say yes to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of gentle, wounded hands, please bless and bless again those hospitals and hospices where the dying come to watch and wait. Give to all the staff a profound sensitivity and to each patient a profound serenity. When death comes, may it come like a friend opening a new door. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, Prince of Peace. Please strengthen the hand of all peacemakers. Steer negotiators through the shoals of injustice, prejudice and pride. Build up courage, trust, forgiveness, patience and hopefulness. And teach us how to look into each other's eyes without fear or self-righteousness. In this time of pandemic, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our governments. Living Lord, we pray for our parliaments and our councils across this continent. Keep the minds and hearts of our leaders open to divine grace, that they may be wiser than they know and have the courage to make the hard decisions that will help our nation minister life in this troubled and scary time. We pray for those in this country who fall between the cracks, those who have no home, those who have no country to belong to, and those who are stuck here, unable to go home. Lord, may they find this nation is their friend who will care for them and provide for them. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the church. Lord, when we think of that small handful of men and women who first gathered to celebrate your resurrection, we marvel at your church now in every country of the world. Whatever our denomination, style of worship, numerical strength or influence, Lord, we pray that we may keep all the faith. Yeah, with integrity and love. Give wisdom, compassion and courage to all who preach in your name. Give your church the grace and compassion at this time of online streaming of the church as the church reaches into homes across nations and across the world. Lord, give us the skills to be the church wherever this message is heard. Touch lives, heal hurts and bring those you love to peace of heart and awareness of your presence. Hear our prayer. And now, Lord, in the quietness of this place, we bring to you the prayers of our own hearts for those known to us who have needs. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, Father, we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the I have holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Well, thanks for joining with us this first Sunday after Easter. If you have needs or would you like a chat or a prayer, please ring or email me. Details are at the end of the service. And don't forget to join us for a cuppa and chat after worship on Zoom. The login link is in the bulletin. As you go out into God's world this week, be Easter people. Be those who say, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He is risen. 
Be ready to be surprised with what God will do next. Look for the risen Christ in those you meet. Let the Holy Spirit nudge and guide you. The tomb is empty because Jesus is out in the world and now we must go into the world too. May the joy and wonder of that first Easter morning live in your hearts today and every day. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah.